Time now for our weekly segment with The Daily Poster. Joining us this week, we have Andrew Perez. He is senior editor and reporter at The Daily Poster. Great to see you, sir. Good to see you, Andrew. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. All right, so you did some digging here, uh, along with one of your colleagues, of Pete Buttigieg and some of the money that is backing him. What little we can glean, and let's just say there's a, lot, a serious lack of transparency around this. Let's throw this tear sheet up on the screen. Pete Buttigieg's Dark Money Donors, a dark money group started by the 2020 presidential hopeful, has not disclosed its donors as promised. Just lay out for the audience what you found here. Sure. Um, yeah, so a dark money group uh, started by Buttigieg after his presidential campaign um, has raised, uh, at least in 2020, uh, they raised seven uh, six-figure donations, uh, donations over $100,000. And, mm -hmm. you know, they raised several $50,000 donations as well, um, and they have not disclosed the source of any of that money. They had said that they were going to uh, last year, and actually it even says so on their Act Blue donation page that they'll disclose their donors, but they, they have not huh. done so yet, and they did not answer uh, our questions about it. So this is the question that I have. How is it legal for somebody who is the transportation secretary to have a political dark money front group in the first place? Is this common? I mean, how does it work in terms of his affiliation? Yeah, well, so he stepped down from the group in 2020 uh, mm -hmm. when he when he was appointed uh, transportation secretary. But you know, if you look at the, the group's website, it literally still calls itself Team Pete HQ yeah. on its Twitter page. So yeah, I mean, mm. it's pretty clear that this group is affiliated with him. Um, I think they had said that they were going to slow down uh, fundraising in 2021, and you know, the group really isn't doing much, but. You know, I think we all understand that, you know, Pete is, uh, Buttigieg is young, he's ambitious, and he's definitely going to run for something again, right? So this is sort of his campaign and waiting whenever he's done uh, serving in public office. Yeah. So this is sort of like the shadow campaign that's there, you know, and people can funnel money there to express their support of him, whether the public knows who those individuals are not. Just put this in the context of there's been all of this, you know, castle intrigue here about, uh, Kamala Harris, everybody knows she's very unpopular, that if Biden doesn't run again, she'd be, you know, a, a deeply flawed candidate. There's a whole lot of donors who've been having these reportedly secret meetings trying to figure out how they could sneak Pete in there instead. So just put your reporting sort of in the context of those broader conversations. Yeah, I mean, Buttigieg could very realistically be a 2024 candidate if Biden doesn't run or, or after that. So, yeah, I mean, I think... Uh, it's 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 definitely important, you know. This group matters, um, and, and you know because yeah, Pete could run again for president. He could run again for something else. So um, you know, having a campaign and waiting is is a pretty uh, is a pretty smart way to you know to be prepared. I think the other thing about this is um, Pete liked to use the fact that he's young to indicate that he would somehow be different. You know, he talked about generational change. But this looks like the same old, same old, just with a younger guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is, you know, raising dark money is uh, is a very, you know, hardcore political move. Um, yes. Yeah. And, and, you know, so these, you know, so he had a pack that that's capped at like five thousand dollar donations here. You know, with, with a group like this, there is no cap on on how much you can give. And, yeah, so they, you know, they raised one donation. That's two hundred fifty thousand dollars. We have no idea who gave it. Um, we have no idea who gave any of this money. And, you know, w one of the things that w that we think is relevant is, he, you know, he's running the transportation department that's going to be tasked with spending more money than any other cabinet agency uh, from the infrastructure uh, bill. You know, mm -hmm. they, they have they have a pot of over five hundred billion dollars that's going to be spread all over the country. And, you know, he's going to be the public face of these of these programs, too. You know, he, he just this week he was in Los Angeles touting touting some of the funding. Um, and so, yeah, he's going to be all over touting this funding. And, uh, you know, it, it's definitely relevant because you have no idea if any of these donors have any interest before the Transportation Department, if they have any infra any interest in the infrastructure money. Um, so. You know, we think we think it matters and we think it's worth covering. Yeah. You know, do we know anything about at least some of the billionaires and others that he's been associated with in the past? Like, give us an idea of who we at least know is involved in the past and could be connected to who this. Who was in the wine cave? Yes, who was in the wine cave? <laughs> to use an old reference. Was, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember who was in the wine cave. But yeah, I mean, I think I think it had been shown that Pete had like several uh, billionaire donors. Um, 
And and yeah, and I, I think there was a report from CNBC that you know some of his donors had uh, had contracts from w- when he was in South Bend. Um, so yeah, I mean you know Pete is just like you know pretty standard run of the mill Democratic politician in that regard. Yeah, I yeah, think it also exposes go. Andrew just the perniciousness of money and politics in general because you know let's say he does go on to run for president or senate or some other office that has power associated with it. I mean, it's very clear how there could be corruption, how there could be a quid pro quo. If you got people who are saying, hey, I'm going to, I'll put some money in now with a wink and a nod that you're going to look out for me on this infrastructure bill. You might look out for me, you know, later on, or I'll be there to back you. If you funnel this infrastructure my money my way, I'll be there to back you with your further f- political ambitions. Not, We're not saying that that is what's going on mm-hmm. here, but that appearance of potential corruption and the total lack of transparency so that journal- journalists like you can't even look into whether that might ultimately be a case, the case is one of the big reasons why we have such tremendous collapse in trust of all of our institutions. Yep. Great reporting here, as always, Andrew. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Our pleasure. And thank you guys so much for watching. We'll have more for you later. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.